Welcome everybody back to the Independent Investor Channel for my reaction to the um, panel discussion that was uh, provided last night by Upper Management. Um, very well received as a share owner in the company. Um, shed a lot of light on multiple aspects of the roadmap going forward. So uh, certainly want to close the book on 2023 on a high note. Uh, and enter into 2024 with some marked momentum. Uh, here, this is the day after the um, the webinar uh, took place, volumes up about 5x prior to uh, to lunch. So it'll be interesting to see that. You know, there was about 110 uh, patrons to the webinar last night. There was about 160 who registered. Um, I think that speaks to the uh, work that needs to be done on the outreach. Uh, and the wherewithal that a Duro Clean technology exists. Uh, I think that um, the progress that's being made on the customer engagement front really stuck out to me. I thought that the presentation by uh, Eric Appleman actually was kind of a, a wonderful highlight as far as what I took out of the webinar uh, explaining the the value cycle and how Aduro is going to play a part in multiple facets of the value cycle and how even some preliminary discussions with big government, uh, big plastic producing uh, companies, uh, as well as uh, recycling waste uh, waste recycling facilities are are kind of kicked off. And and I I took away some pretty cool one liners from uh, Eric Appleman. He he gets really in depth, and then he kind of summarizes what he's what he's saying in in a very interesting way of understanding some pretty technical information. And I I think he really does a wonderful job of of speaking to investors. Uh, on the same token, I thought that the CEO did a wonderful job of marshalling uh, the message by his uh, CFO as well as his CRO uh, Eric Appleman. Mina Bechet was also on the call, as well as uh, Abe Dyke, and uh, just appreciated their input. But Ofer did a great job in really setting up parameters. I, I really gleaned a, a real uh, a emphasis on speaking to share owners in understanding why certain things are disclosed right now and other things are not. Uh, why this has to be looked upon as a long-term opportunity and not a short-term opportunity. And I'll just double down on that and speculate a little bit. Those who are selling the shares now sub $1 or sub 250 probably are in it for the wrong reasons. And I'm not suggesting that you will not make money short selling this company, uh, selling in the short term. But I, I think anybody who has done due diligence on this company will understand if they don't get bought out and certain pieces fall in line the way Aduro and specifically Mr. Appleman explained the potential here in what Aduro is trying to do, inserting themselves in the value cycle. I think the sky's the limit. Uh, I certainly don't want to be overblown with this. Um, I don't want to jump up and down. Uh, I don't want to declare victory this early because from my perspective and my lens, I think it's incumbent upon all investors to understand that if from now until 2027, it, it is going to be a building of moving would-be clients from the lowest tier level um, into more of the collaborative stage and then more of the written agreements going forward. And, and Ofer did a great job of explaining that and you know, Eric Appleman, he referred to that uh, that tiered strategy that they have, and it really kind of defined for would-be investors um, the, the roadmap going forward. And if it weren't for the identification of the five customers right now engaged in their uh, customer outreach program and the 20 additional uh, potential clients that they have dossiers on, I, I think I would have considered it to be a failure, but that additional uh, outreach was something that I alluded to in my video right before the webinar. 
In charging with a Duro to really put some granularity around the impact over what the customer engagement program is rendering, and that's what it meant to me, is that these efforts through commissioning R2 is absolutely working. And I would expect that for every of the 20 uh, customers that Aduro uh, declared that um, uh, our companies uh, along that value cycle that have demonstrated an interest in the company and specifically the technology, that there is a, probably a significant amount more of interest uh, that is going to be generated over the coming years. Um, Eric spoke about kind of, uh, 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 warning share owners, or at least preparing share owners, uh, to stand by for roles. I think he actually said that it was something that I picked up on, but I'll, I'll share a few things that, uh, Eric Appleman, uh, said in his, uh, one-liners. Now, I, I think one of the big takeaways is to really understand, uh, Eric did a great job of, of um, introducing himself for those that did not know uh, his background, 35 years in the industry, his time with Unilever, and his time as of late at Brightlands, uh, uh, where there was a number of different startups and a number of different corporate initiatives that they were working on uh, with regard to the plastic recycling problem. And I don't think it deserves to be understated. Uh, and, and Eric would agree and has outwardly said a couple of times that he chose Aduro uh, based on all of his holistic knowledge about what was coming through the early stage pipeline. And looking at the Aduro technology on the onset, and he he mentioned two years to fail. So that just speaks to the observation period that he had in looking at the Aduro clean technology and maybe having a an idea that it was too good to be true. But, and I quote, he says, two years to fail, and they failed to fail. I just found that to be interesting, how that rolled off his tongue to suggest that it was too good to be true. And that when it was put to the rigor of, of, of actually validation, um, he was also quoted uh, in that webinar as, as discussing the technology uh, and its performance to be better than what he um, even um, assessed on the onset of being introduced to the Aduro Clean Technologies hydrochemolytic process. And, and I found that to be really, really interesting. A couple more that I'll share with you guys who have who were not uh, privy to the webinar, uh, I would encourage you to kick over. I'm not going to release the webinar through the Independent Investor Channel. However, I found the uh, promotional video at the end to be very suggestive in how Aduro is going to couple itself with large and small infrastructure projects going forward. Mina Bechet did a great job of kind of discussing this collaborative effort. Uh, I think in no short order, Eric kind of alluded to Aduro as being somewhat of a startup. I, I, I don't know if I share entirely in that sentiment in that Aduro's got over a decade of evolution, uh, albeit I do agree with him from the perspective that it is a relatively unknown company and it's $60 million market cap. I think the runway going forward uh, it is extremely promising and 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 very positive. So from that perspective, I do agree with Eric, but the, the prospects of what these guys are trying to do and in, in their careful deployment of capital going forward, you know, the original investor presentation alluded to the prospects of, you know, doing some of the commissioning on their own. And I don't know how much of the commissioning work, uh, if it's going to involve multiple facilities out there, both small, medium, and large scale uh, uh, projects are going to be carried out with the assistance of big industry. I would expect that Aduro uh, bringing their technology to bear and inserting it along that solution-based uh, perspective that they have, uh, just to share kind of another perspective that Eric Appleman picked up on, and it wasn't in my cliff notes for the folks that actually covered this, he said, he thinks from the customer back, not all about themselves. 
And what he meant by that is to step back for a second. And, and you know, as I cover the microcap space, it's always a story about what they are doing internally, what we're doing, how we separate ourselves from the masses of companies that are trying to emerge with their respective technology or their respective claims on on different you know avenues of of whatever they're trying to bring to bear. And it's never really about looking at it from the customer's perspective. Aduro can have the greatest technology out there, but if it doesn't serve an end customer, then what are we talking about? We don't have a, a, a company here. And I found that to be really, really telling to um, Eric Appleman's experience and his looking at it from the lens of the customer and what Aduro can bring to the table as far as their uh, scale down approach. Um, their high efficiency approach, uh, their low energy input, which absolutely renders itself uh, economically viable. But not only that, but the feedstock that is going to be in such demand here over the next couple of years, um, he called it um, the uh, max carbon atoms in a true Eric Appleman form. And that just speaks to the high input of the feedstock and then the rendering of the material um, being rendered at such a high um, high efficiency. In other words, you don't lose a lot through the process. So not only is it economically viable, but also that you render um, over 90% of the um, of the product uh, on the back end uh, through the um uh, through the production of the the, the high yield um, uh, usable product, he said something else that really stuck out to me. And then I'll go over the cliff notes for you guys that didn't actually get to uh, enjoy the webinar again. Please spend sixty minutes of your time catching it. It was extremely insightful, especially the portion where he walked through the benefits of. Uh, hydrochemolytic technology, and it, it was it was really, really um, very, very telling on um, his expertise, uh, his command over the topic. and and really, if I understood Aduro to be separated from the rest of the competition out there, after that webinar, I actually felt much more separated from the industry right now in that what Apple, Eric Appleman referred to as 70-year-old technology that's trying to be deployed uh, with a necessity in the industry for new methods and new ways uh, of, of capturing uh, the uh, maximum amount of yield uh, through the deployment of these different processes. Uh, and I, I thought that that was the most telling takeaway in really separating Aduro from the pack and understanding what what type of um, what type of uh, uh, technology we're looking at here, um, another quote that came up: "I have not seen anything that comes even close," and that really just speaks to his perspective. He talks all the time about you know questioning the technology when he first looked at it. Now, having been with Aduro for the last six months, and really kind of getting intimate with the technology and truly understanding that this isn't just a one-off. This is a very, very real and, and viable solution. And up until now, one of the notes that I had from our close network is that all of these goings on, all of these programs, Game Changer was touched upon last night a little bit, but all of these customer engagements has yielded a net of zero negative feedback thus far in the validation, the customer outreach going on times five now, and then moving on out of stage five to stage six of the Game Changer program. Uh, I'm really encouraged that that program is still ongoing. Uh, I want them to extract every bit of benefit out of that. And if it takes a couple of months more, uh, to um, determine the best way forward at the completion of Game Changer, I'm all about it. Um, I, I really would ask that share owners stop asking the questions about things that have already been answered with regard specifically to Game Changer. I know everybody is excited. I understand that 
you know, if we could just have some color, it may lend itself one way or the other on what we could foresee going forward. But as Ofer disclosed last night, there is sensitivity, not only sensitivity around the topic, but they have entered into a uh, kind of a silence agreement with uh, Shell as appropriate. Um, it's non-disclosure while they're uh, in the process of it. And I think everybody needs to respect that and understand that in due time, the share owners and the shareholders and anyone interested will be provided that color on the Game Changer program when it is appropriate to do so and not prior to. The, the reason I ask that is because there would have been some other questions that I specifically would have had that probably would have been better served uh, in the bank of 150 questions that was submitted. And we keep asking the same question over and over again, uh, full well knowing that in respect to the program itself, there's not a lot to be lent uh, outside when it is uh, appropriate to do so. My question was specifically surrounding the financial health of the company, both short term over the next six to 12 months, and also to elaborate a little bit on where we see the financials of the company materializing uh, over the course of customer engagement. There was a uh, one uh, uh, segment that Ofer talked about, the little bit of revenue that'll be generated uh, through the customer engagement program. But if you picked up on Ofer also said and talked about the potential of these customers to move from you know, a simple application to more of a, a mid-tier application and then more of a collaborative effort on the high end with some of the major players, those projects could render you know, upwards of, of millions of dollars in, in revenues. And he broke that down into a tier of understanding where where this p uh, company is looking to um, define their swim lanes and, and really look at where they're looking to exploit as they build this good baseline and, and portfolio of, of clients out at this particular juncture. So I will go over and try to summarize some of the cliff notes that we took. These were provided to me. I think Carbonomics had uh, something to do with generating these, if not Yazan from our community. Uh, it is a good time halfway through this reaction to the webinar. We will be having a panel discussion tentatively this Saturday. So you're going to want to stay tuned. Hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, because we're going to come on and we're going to do a pre-recorded but released the same day panel discussion between myself, Yazan, uh, Penny Queen, and finally, Mariush, who has been very forthcoming with providing this information to, to uh, would-be patrons to the message, those that are interested in the story, those who are following the story, and even more so, perhaps maybe even looking to join the community as a share owner in the company, all right? But increasing the size of the team in Canada, USA, Europe, and Mexico, I spoke about my conviction. Really, when I look at Eric Appleman, it's almost like the Chicago Bulls traded away Michael Jordan and Aduro picked up on Michael Jordan. I, I was really blown away by his delivery last night. I really was. I think that he probably was able to say about one-tenth of what he wanted to say. <laughs> I really do. Uh, I think this guy's passionate about the topic, and it really does transcend in his message. And I I'm a very, I'm very insightful when it comes to sitting back as a share owner and understanding. I, I thought that Ofer had very good command uh, over defining those swim lanes. So, you know, he interjected a few times when he was talking about, and I, I sensed that to be what he wanted to convey to share owners uh, during the panel, and I really appreciated that. I, I think that, you know, there's no way once you set a panel like that in motion that the message is going to be conveyed perfectly. Uh, but I thought they really had a slam dunk last night and on a, a number of different facets. The most specific takeaway for me was the effectiveness of the hydrochemolytic technology. When he went over that slide, and it was a little bit difficult to see. It was fairly small. I actually took a snapshot of it with my phone and I had to go in and enlarge each of those cells of, of really understanding. Eric made a comment last night that some of the impurities actually help further the technology along. 
And I just keep picking up on these things and I'm 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 intently listening for drawbacks. I'm trying to understand if there are deficiencies with the technology. I didn't know there were seven types of plastic. I didn't know how they interpreted PVC being such a significantly light portion of the uh, overall plastic that's produced, right? And that Aduro could handle with ease those types of plastics, but it did not generate any need or necessity because it just does not make up the mass of the polystyrene, uh, polypropylene, polyethylene, right, that make up the vast majority of the hard to recycle plastics. And Eric really did a great job of separating that historically they have been close to impossible, economically unviable to 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 uh, recycle these hard to re uh, recycle plastic, and that Aduro really kind of had no problem at all dealing with the contamination. Uh, the high yield uh, on the back end that is produced. And I just found that to be really one of the key generators and one that I actually anticipate going back on and engaging in a little bit of self-study on. The 20 corporates and the 50 startups were part of the Bra uh, Brightlands Camelot campus when Eric Appleman was there. He spoke about you know, his interest in Aduro, joined the Aduro team, and 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 since he was introduced two years ago to the technology, um, I I, th I found that to be really telling. Two years to fail, uh, they failed to fail. I thought that was really smart way of kind of codifying his um, uh, uh, um, his his uh, you know critique and his skepticism, as I believe that a lot of people probably have skepticism. You know, maybe they've been burned in the past. Maybe they've engaged in micro cap investing. All this is just another too good to be true story. I, I think at the end of the day, my friends, you're going to have to come up with a consensus on your own. I have already made my convention, uh, con, uh, con, conviction call um, and to suggest that I I sense nothing more than truth coming from this guy in in talking about a chemistry that they don't mind putting up to one of the largest petrochemical companies in the world to be subject to a game changer program and to have no doubts in their mind that they were going to start and finish that program. And it's looking like they're inevitably going to do that. We'll have to stand by for color on that. But the five active customer engagement projects really helped clarify for me the best I could tell in my due diligence was at three. There are five, um, one of which we know. Uh, the other four I will not speculate on until Aduro chooses to announce that to the grander audience, and then we'll, we will pay that forward to you guys Um these are multi-billion dollar petrochemical or oil companies. We know that. Uh, three of those customer engagements uh, are plastic producers themselves. One is a plastic converter uh, talking with a, a con consumer goods company. So this was the part where Eric Appleman was walking around the value cycle and identifying all of the different players in the uh, circular economy. This was always a question of mine. Where is a Duro going to fit in this category? And Eric talked about the ability of that, that chemical segment to be kind of a new addition. If I've got it on my notes, how I found that to be really, really telling. Um, but the, the, the chemical aspect or the chemical production facility or the, the purification facility or recycling facility as being kind of where Aduro was going to drift toward to provide some value in that, that cycle. All right. Uh, there's high interest in the industry. We all know that. Um, there are currently 20 active engaged uh, dossiers on those companies. Eric talked about that. I don't know the level of those commitments. Uh, I only chalk that up as to be a net positive uh, and one that Aduro felt comfortable with releasing to the general public last night. Um, that is on the top five companies, all right. Oh, that is uh, in, in addition to the five companies that they're engaged with, with already. Appleman mentioned the technology works even better than he originally thought it did when he joined. We've talked about that. That was a 
takeaway for me when he said that Aduro has not failed one evolution metric so far in these engagement programs. I talked about that as well. That was a takeaway for me as well. So when I read these cliff notes, I was like, okay, right on. I picked out the, the right stuff when we talked about this. Uh, going into 2024, obviously, you'll have to come up with your own thesis for strategic outlook. The one thing that really stuck out to me is when they talked about the three tiers or the three levels of the different customers, the the kind of the, the, the easier to satisfy, lower slice, the mid tier as we start to get into a little bit more complex needs from the client, and then the, 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 the top end collaboration that will be necessary in your more and your most complex uh, projects. Uh, one thing that stuck out to me is that they skipped a year. Um, they skipped over 2024, they went right to 2025, they skipped over 2026, and they earmarked 2027. This is in line with the investor presentation released by Aduro uh, up to this point. So they have stuck with that timeline. What it suggests to me is that this company is has a long-term vision, is looking to uh, extrapolate the data over R2 um, to prolong the customer engagement process uh, as long as they need. Uh, they will use all of the renderings via data to the construction and the commissioning of R3. Uh, R3 expected uh, as early as the end of 2024. I'm not holding my breath on that because, again, uh, both Ofer and Mina talked about the importance of using that data uh, as as a real catalyst into R3, the design uh, of R3, uh, the 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 size, the complexity, everything that is uh, being gleaned off of R2 and those customer engagements needs to be honored. Okay, but convert existing customer engagement participants from technology evaluation stage to the technology collaboration. Okay. I think that really sets some nice swim lanes around investor expectations and understanding how Aduro is being introduced to the client, whether it be at the lower mid-tier and even possibly jumping right up to the collaborative stage, uh, but but really being able to tailor their product to the more simple uh, of applications uh, and the mid-tier applications and then the more complex uh, applications. I found that to be really, really telling and a real key takeaway for me, work on the designing building of R3 through 2024, uh, expecting to have R3 ready in early 2025, uh, expand the company's IP position, adding two to four more patents in 2024. I, I think that's great. One of the questions in the Q&A alluded to the moat that is existing around the hydrochemolytic technology. Uh, we all know about the patents that are already registered and protected, but um, the learnings that have gone on and are being validated and have been validated only give Aduro that much more of a runway uh, in way of a head start, in way of really implementing what they can tend to be one of the best solutions in the marketplace. And I have no reason to suggest otherwise. Um, during the Q&A, I thought it was pretty good. Uh, they they talked about the the different varieties of uh, plastic, but really a lot of takeaways here, a lot of nuggets, a lot of notes that I took. You know, I made some uh, interesting uh, notations here when Eric was talking about the thousand uh, euro charge off for the European companies for every ton of plastic produced as kind of a look. If you're going to produce this, you have to give us some assurance, us being the government. Uh, to 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 really kind of put a down payment on what historically has been proven out uh, to be the end all fate of plastic, and that's in the landfills or in the oceans because they are just not economically viable. So, if a duro can can sport the ability to bring in that feedstock and interject themselves in that value cycle that Eric talked about. Um, then those have a chance of of really saving a lot on the bottom line for a lot of these companies. All right. Um, the new class of chemical facilities. That's what Eric said. That's I was trying to find that in my notes. Again, along that value cycle. So spend a few moments in review of that uh, slide that was presented by upper management last night. Uh, so too much to unpack. Um, we're getting close to 30 minutes on my initial reaction. Obviously, I'm very, very satisfied. Aduro doesn't have to do this. 
Uh, I, I think that you can tell and you can get a sense that they are very, very excited about the prospects going forward. I, I think, and I will close with this. If you're invested in this company, the hardest thing to do in this company is going to be hold, not to buy. The, 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 the hardest thing to do in this company is not to sell for a profit prematurely. We saw a little bit of that today as we speak, selling for 90 cents. I think that could be one of the most regretful moves, more so than not even entering into the position in the company in the first place. I think that can be a really re regrettable and premature decision to sell out of this company without realizing its full potential. We've got three years. Ask yourself, my friends, where do you want to be in three years when you reflect back on this Aduro Clean Technologies opportunity? And moreover, where is it that you presume to be in observing what you heard last night and what the prospects are going forward for a Duro clean technology as they tackle the plastic problem. Guys, I appreciate you tuning in for the totality of this video. Leave your comments at the bottom of this video. Leave your reaction to the webinar. If you did not have a chance to check out the webinar, please do so. I make it required content. If you're following the story uh, as intimately as I am and contend that you are doing your fair share in due diligence, it is absolutely not an option, rather required of you to review that content, pay attention to it, and hopefully you'll glean the bullish perspective that I was able to glean at the conclusion of the webinar. Guys, thank you so much. Appreciate you tuning in for the totality of the video, and good luck in your investment future. Thank you.